Hi everyone, my name is Jonathan Sanchez, artist at CG Sketch, and today I start a series of videos where I'm going to talk about how to achieve some of the looks in this particular project. Um, I'll talk about um, how I created the materials, the landscaping, the grass, perhaps the lighting, and I'll divide that into various videos, hopefully to help you guys um, improve your, your skills. And today I'm going to begin by talking about some of the guidelines that I always keep in mind when I'm laying out my landscaping. I use forest pack to scatter my plants. I know many of you do too. And I'll show you at the end of the video briefly how I use that tool to scatter my, uh, my trees and, and plants. So first and foremost, I use landscaping to create depth in my images. Um, so if you look here, I'll always have a foreground, midground, and background. And landscaping is very useful to achieve this, this depth. So I'll have my, in this case, I, you'll see I have a tree here in my foreground closest to the camera, followed by the subject, which is the architecture. And then a background, I'll have some uh, distant trees. And by always dividing your image this way, you're going to achieve more depth rather than a flat image um, that it's just, just naturally going to be more attractive to the eye. And um, when it comes to actually scattering trees in an area that's uh, more rural, you always want to keep in mind that there's going to always be different vertical um, vertical heights in in uh, in your in your plantings. Sometimes I see renderings where all the trees are the same height all around; it's just one line of trees, and and, and it typically is not as pleasant or natural to the eye as if you were to do show more variation in height. So what I do is I'll have a forest pack item for each. Uh, individual for each not individual tree for each individual zone of uh, vertical zone I call them so for the highest trees I have forest pack scattered items where I will uh, more sparsely scatter some of the older more mature taller trees I'll have another forest pack scatter item where I'll, sh I'll, I'll have the lower smaller trees that are going to be more densely packed then I'll have another forest pack item with the um, shrubberies, some of the undergrowth that are going to be even more densely packed. And last, I'll have, I'll scatter some um, grass covering, some, some weeds and, and some of the smaller little things that you'll see coming out of the ground that are even more densely packed. And by doing this, you create more, var more variety in the image and, and it'll just, again, look more natural. Um, you'll see in, in all of the pictures that I uh, created for this project the same concept it's taller trees um, shorter trees a foreground in foreground tree the midground background if we go back to this image you'll see the same concept again i use these branches for the foreground these shrubberies here midground for the house and background trees with variety in height and again this is these are guidelines that you can use um, that are always going to help your image have more depth so now let's take a quick look at how I use forest pack to scatter uh, my plants and I'll show you that now. Okay, so here we have a view of the file within 3D Studio Max of the project. I have removed all the previous plants and trees and shrubs and garden. Just want a blank canvas so I could quickly show you guys um, the two primary methods that I use to scatter my plants and trees. And um, so let's get to it. So you'll see here I have only one forest pack and that's just the grass here which I've I'm showing as proxies so let's go ahead and create a forest pack item forest pack pro and so now you'll see here you have two primary methods that you could use to scatter your plants you can have forest pack generate um, the plants and scatter them automatically and we'll, we'll see that method or you could do a custom edit where you can individually place each plant or tree by hand Let's start with the generate method and let's see how that works. So once you click generate, you just click on the surface, start here and we go to the edit menu. Let's call this uh, uh, short trees. Okay. Now you'll, you'll be familiarized surely with a lot of these settings. So let's go ahead and go to surfaces tab and let's make sure we add this other um, surface here I have my my site divided into two planes I've got them both selected on here and now if we go to transforms you're gonna wanna 
create some variety in your transforms of your plants. So let's go ahead and enable rotation from uh, 0 to 359 degrees. That way it could rotate um, randomly. Let's go ahead and enable random scale anywhere from 80 to 120%. So Forest Pack here is going to, going to scale your items randomly to, uh, to give a little bit of uh, variation in size. All right, so once we do that, now we could come over here and um, let's go to area. And so as is right now, you'll see a couple of just random um, proxies that Forest Pack has created. We're not gonna use this, obviously, we're gonna insert trees eventually, but I'm not gonna have Forest Pack fill the entire area. Instead, I'm gonna paint onto the area where I want Forest Pack to scatter and generate these trees. So I'm gonna turn off where it says surface areas, I'm gonna turn this off. And later on, we're gonna come back and add a painted area. But first, let's add the trees. So you can do this multiple ways. You can, um, if you have a library, you can uh, select them from here. I have a couple of Max Tree libraries installed into Forest Pack, and these are pretty great. So let's say I wanna select any of these trees here. I could just um, say, for instance, I want this, uh, let's pick an oak tree, something like this, this oak tree right here. Uh, it's going to insert itself as an XREF into the library. So we'll have that on there. And let's go ahead and add another tree. And I'll add this using another method so that you guys could see what uh, how else you could do it. So it's going to take a bit to load over here. Okay. So we got one tree on there. Let's call this um, small tree one. Uh, now I have a tree that I've loaded into a proxy of a tree that I've loaded onto this project. Um, it's a tree from Evermotion, I believe. So if we come back here, let's select the forest pack. Okay, so um, you can also add by selecting a custom object. So I added a new item and instead of selecting it from the library, I'll just go to custom object, click on none and click on the proxy of the tree that I had imported. And we'll call this uh, small tree two. So now I have two relatively small trees. Let's go ahead and start scattering these and see what that looks like. So I had mentioned I wanted to paint the areas where I want them to be scattered. So let's go ahead and click here to add a, a paint area. Let's go on the settings and make the brush size, let's say 20 feet by 20 feet. And now let's go ahead and paint on here, keeping uh, an eye on this view, what it's gonna look like. So if I come over here and start painting across here, you'll see that forest pack automatically just starts wherever I paint, starts generating uh, trees like so, see that? And you could come over here, once you're done, you can um, change the uh, distribution. In other words, how, how far apart they are from each other. You can create a, uh, um, you could change the pattern that, that Forest, Patch, uh, Forest Pack uses. Um, I like using the patches pattern. And then you could change the units. In other words, how big of a scale this pattern has. In other words, how far apart the trees are from each other. So the bigger the, the pattern, the more sparse the trees will be. The smaller the pattern, the more compact and dense uh, the forest pack, um, the trees will be to each other. And of course, you could also come over here if you want trees to be, trees that are similar, the, the same trees to be close to each other, you could select clusters and you could change this too so that the trees species are kind of clustered together. So you'll have uh, a repetition of the same tree kind of um, in islands to themselves and versus just random trees. I mean, this is just totally based on, on, on your preference and, and uh, whatever looks good to you. So that's pretty much it. So now we've got these trees scattered here randomly. And let's see what that looks like real quick. So if we come over here, let's go ahead and render this out. Okay. And there you see some of the smaller trees have been planted. Since this ground has a, has a, a slope to it, slopes down in the rear of the property, um, you're gonna see kind of these trees a little bit lower because they're coming down from ground that's sloping down um, behind the view. So now let's take a look at how to insert trees 
by hand individually. So let's go ahead and create another Forest Pro item. And this time, let's do a custom edit. So again, let's select the surface that we want. And let's call this one tall trees. Again, let's select from uh, from the library. It's got um, I use one of my Max Tree models here, say from Ever the Evergreen collection. And let's say let's use this one. This is a pretty tall tree right here. And let's go ahead and add one more. So I'll add a new item again from the library. And let's add something like, um, eh, maybe this one will do. Okay, so now we've got two tall trees. Let's call this one tall tree one. Let's call this one tall tree two. Okay, same as when we generated the smaller trees, let's set up the transform. So we'll come over here and um, enable rotation, random rotation. And let's go ahead and enable a random scale as well. Okay, now here comes the difference between this method and the method that we used previously where Forest Pack randomly scattered the trees. We're gonna put one by one individually each tree that we want. And to do so, all we have to do is just turn on our, um, our item mode. You could click here or click here on the items editor. And now you can select which model you'd like to add. We have two options, or you could just have random uh, random selection by forest pack each time you click. Since these trees are kind of similar, I'll leave them at random. And all you have to do is just go to add. And now once add is selected within the top view or any other view, you could just one by one start placing trees where you want them to go. And I'll have some here and perhaps some, let's see, back to there somewhere. Okay. Maybe a couple scattered back here. All right, once you're done or right click, you can now edit these, um, these trees you just placed. Um, leave this mode selected and you can actually one by one select the tree that you, um, you want to modify and then you can move it. You can move it, you can um, change what model it is. So let's say, let's select this one back here and move it a little bit towards this direction. And let's say I want to change it from tall tree one to tall tree two. I'll just go in the properties, select tall tree two. Let's say I want to make it a little bigger, scale it up somewhat, rotate it somewhat. All right, let's do the same thing to this one here. Let's move this one a little bit more this way, something like so. Let's say I want to copy this tree over. Let's select this one and I'll just hold um, shift and drag, and now I've copied this, this tree over here. And let's say I rotate it somewhat, uh, somewhere right there, drag it down a bit. Okay, let's modify these over here. Same thing, I just selected it. Move it right there. Let's change it to a tall tree too. Scale it down somewhat. All right. And I don't want to interfere with this triangle here. So I'm going to move this tree out the way. All right. Kind of following my rule of thirds here where um, the highlighted part of the image is going to fall on one of my thirds of the image. And I'll probably do a video regarding that as well in the near future. Okay. So let's see what this looks like. Okay, and now you see I've quickly added by hand some of these taller trees. And I mean, if this is just a very rough placement and these require some tweaking, some of these might be a little bit too tall. I mean, I might need to cover up some of this uh, 
area down here with these smaller trees and then add some more ground coverings and weeds and stuff like I initially mentioned. But you get a general idea of how it's done. You can either have Forest Pack generate the trees for you, uh, scatter them automatically using um, the uh, distribution maps that come with Forest Pack. You could scale them up and down to put them more close together, more dense or more sparse apart. Or you could place the trees individually, the plants individually, each one by hand, and then modify them afterward. So each method has its, um, its pros and cons, and you could use this easily to, to dress your image using the landscaping to dress your image and make uh, and add some depth like I originally said. Speaking of depth, I forgot to add a tree here in the front, so let's go ahead and do that real quick. So let's go back here to my tall trees. Let's go to item mode and let's add, yep, let's click add. Come over here. I'll place a tree right there. Okay. Again, you can modify the item after it's after the fact. And let's see why it's floating here. Did I select the surface? Oh, there's no surface selected. I forgot. So let's go ahead and select the surface there. I added the surface on the original forest pack, but not in this one. So there you go. Now both surfaces are selected. So the trees are planted on the ground versus before they were sort of floating. Okay. So let's go ahead and scale this one down a bit on the foreground so that you see some of its, let's change the tree. Let's make it um, tall tree one. Okay, something like that. Now let's move it up the way of the house. Okay, so now as I originally mentioned, we have a foreground tree, mid-ground subject, and background for interest, for depth. So now let's see what that looks like. So here it is. So now we have a tree in the foreground to add some of that depth that I was originally talking about in the video. And again, you'll see, you see how easy it was to place these images, uh, these trees using forest pack um, individually or generating them using the um, distribution maps that come with forest pack. And you can scale those dis distribution maps up and down to increase the distance between the trees or bring them closer together. You could cluster them. So there's, um, there's an unlimited amount of tools that you could use to create some diversity, some variation, but these general guidelines that I showed about um, depth and about um, creating different variety and, and vertical heights will generally increase the interest of your image. Also, you could use the trees to play with shadows, for instance, the shadows um, coming into to the areas. Uh, so you could play with the shadow and light areas to add some visual interest to your images. And all these things are gonna um, are gonna add up to creating a, an image that's pleasant to the eye. Um, something else I could mention, another tip. Once you have the trees and plants the way you want them, what I usually do is I'll convert the what's visible in the viewports to prox proxies. So right now, if you go under the display tab, they are point clouds. So you see all those little dots and stuff, but to save some resources and make your viewports a little faster, you can um, make them proxies instead. Uh, say you want to leave them as pyramids, and then on their max items in on their viewport, you could lower that to say 100 or so or, or 50. So now it's not going to be showing all the trees that you have. It's going to be showing only a 50. But when you render, all your trees will be rendered. But this will generally save you some resources in the viewport. You could do the same for um, for all your forest pack items. Like I, I did that for my grass as well. Instead of having a, a million little dots for the for the grass, I just turn them into proxies and scatter them sparsely. So I know the forest pack is there, um, but it's not hogging up the resources in my viewport. So again, guys, these are my general guidelines. I'll be making more videos regarding this project in the next uh, few weeks. Um, if you got any questions, feel free to drop them below. And, and again, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy and hope you learned something from these videos. Thanks.